Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Four Gardens by Korea Board Games and Arcane Wonders. This is a two to four player game that takes roughly about 45 minutes to play and it's for ages 10 and up. And in the game Four Gardens, you are basically laying the groundwork down to create gardens. And there are multiple different types of gardens featured on these cards here of different colors and panoramas. Once a certain number of gardens have been placed and flipped, you'll be scoring and then finally the game will end. The player who has the most points on this track here is going to be the winner by the time that all players get equal numbers of turns. I'll show you how to set the game up, how to play, and of course our review. To begin the setup of the game, first give each player five cards from the main game deck. Make sure that those cards are shuffled and then make sure that you deal out three cards from on top of the deck to an area in which all players can reach. This is also the card pool where you can gather cards throughout the game. Additionally, there is a main game board. For each player playing, give them four colored cubes and make sure they place those cubes on the number three. If you're playing with four players, make sure each one of the cubes is in each of the areas marked three. Then go ahead and take the three different extra square tokens. There's going to be one with an extra space for resources, a space for extra victory points, and a place where you can gather wild resources. There should be four of them. It's equal to the number of players as well. Each player has one of these guys here, which is where they're going to be bidding their resources, and they're going to have their five cards in hand at the start of the game. Go ahead and place the resources, the water, the wood, the grass, and the rocks within reach of all players. And finally, you'll be setting up this wonderful little tower here. Now for the starting player, the, 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 these are going to be facing certain players in the game. The starting player is going to get a 0, 1, 2, and 3, and it's always going to look like this, with this always facing the starting player. This thing is obviously going to be rotating throughout the game, so just make sure that each player is basically sidelined towards one of the sides of this garden tower. After that, you're basically ready to be in the game. Let's talk about how to play. The game is formatted in rounds. In a round, each player takes a turn, and for each turn, each player will get three actions. Their actions are gonna come from the cards in your hand. Your hand is gonna consist of five cards, and each of them will have three actions that you can take. One action is to take a card that you have and place it face up on the field. That's called a groundwork action. It's going to have a number of resources on it on the very bottom that will indicate the resources required to be placed on it in order for it to be flipped up to its panorama side, which is how you score and end the game. Another action that you can take is gathering wild resources. In this one here, it just says one wild resource and place it down on one of your groundwork cards. These are rare, but when you get them, yeah, you basically just take a resource that you need, place it on here, and discard the card. The next action that you can take is a way in which you can gather resources. Uh, the top right of the card here is going to show you which one of these uh, pagodas here, or tower portions, is going to be flipped, and then in what way you gather resources, whether it be bottom to top or top to bottom. So in this case here, my card here says I can flip or rotate the top. When you rotate, you, if you're going to rotate the bottom, you'll actually rotate the entire bottom. If you're going to rotate the next portion, you'll rotate it this way, or you can choose to rotate it this way. Um, and then the next portion is the same thing. You can rotate it one way or the other way. And then finally here. Now the top portion, I can choose. I can either rotate it like this, or I can rotate it like this. Once I have played the card and I have rotated it, then I'm going to collect resources. So we'll just say I rotated it like this. And then it says I can collect resources from the bottom all the way to the top. In which case, I would collect three wood, two water, one rock, and one grass, but only up to the point where I have enough resources to allocate to my storage location. So in this case, because I only have four resource locations, I would actually place a wood, a wood, a wood, and then only one, uh, one water. After that, I would, I would neglect the extra water, rock, and the grass here because I no longer have any more storage locations to fill. After I have either placed a groundwork, gather wild resource, or rotated and then collected, whether it be up uh, top to bottom or bo uh, bottom to top, then I could choose this other action here, which is the wheelbarrow. This is how I gather resources. Basically, hopefully, after you've gathered enough resources and collected them into your little bin here, you can now play that action to take resources from your area here and place them on your groundwork cards. You'll take them, You'll place them on locations of the exact same symbol. And then, if you have no more actions left, that will end your turn. So take any of those actions from the cards that you have in your hand, 
up to three, and then end. You'll discard any resources on your groundwork cards, provided that you filled up your entire groundwork card, and you will reveal it and flip it over into its panorama form. This is going to then let you score points. Uh, to score points, you'll basically check the top left side of the panorama, and that'll have a color. That color will be the cube that you use to move across one of these tracks here. If you have multiples of the same panorama, um, as long as they're not exactly the same art, so in this case here, I, if I have an orange one, you'll see that there are three different orange panoramas. As long as I have another orange one that is not the exact same, like these two are exactly the same, I cannot use this one as well. I'd have to use a different orange one, um, like this one here. If I flipped over one and then I had already had it on the field and I flipped over another, as long as they're not the exact same one, I can connect them and then I will score the one I placed and then each one that's already on the field will score again. So if they're both purple, I'd flip over one that would score me purple, I flip over the next one that would score me purple and because I flipped over one that is the same, I get another purple. And that's said for every single one of these. Additionally too, which is also kind of cool, when you complete a panorama, so if you completed the orange one here that has three different pieces, you're actually going to get a bonus tile. You can get one that gives you additional resource slots, you can get one that's going to give you additional victory points at the end of the game, or you can get one that you turn on immediately that will let you get four resources of your choice, and each of these drastically get reduced in value as you pick them up. The resources are going to go from four, three, two to one, the victory points will go four, three, two, one, and then this one here, the resources that you can hold into your storage bin, is going to stay throughout the game, giving you more slots for resources from when you gather them by rotating this and then collecting. And you'll just pass turn. Take three of these actions, either to play a card face up, which is going to be your groundwork, that way you can score them as points, gather resources, play those resources on your cards, or the special bonus one of collecting and taking one of these and placing it down, and passing. And it'll just keep going from there. At the end of your turn, uh, you're going to draw cards. So in this case here, let's say I played those two cards here, I have two left. I can take any cards I want from either the top of the deck here or from this little area here. So I have three, I can say, oh, I want this red one here, and I want this other wet red one here. I can take these guys into my hands, fulfilling my hand limit of five. And then I'm going to reveal two new cards and place them out onto the field for my next player. And there you go, that's the entirety of the game. At a certain point, I believe it's either eight or it's nine cards on the field. That will trigger the end of the game, in which case everybody gets equal turns. And then you'll score up. You'll see who has the most points on these tracks here, totaling total of 10. Um, and then of course your bonuses, uh, whether you get one of these guys or not. And whoever has the most points is the winner of the game for Gardens. Now there's some other little intrinsic seeds that we'll talk about in my review, but that's pretty much the idea of the game. Okay, so a couple of caveats. Now, like I said before, when you flip over a groundwork card because you filled in the resources for it, you're gonna score one of those colored track points. You'll be like, oh, I scored yellow and I am the yellow player. I will move one space on yellow going from three points to four points at the end of the game. There's also a cool thing that where once you get all the way across the track and get to 10, if you score on yellow again, you will not gain points, but you will push everybody else on the yellow track down one. And if you score enough points on the yellow track to push somebody or everybody off of the track, they cannot score points on that track anymore for the rest of the game. So you can be a little dirty against your opponents if you want. Another thing to note too is some of the cards are gonna have a wild. So that means that how you place these cards face up matters. If I were to have the last card on this panorama be wild, I would flip it over, I would take a wild track bonus, and then I would do all the other ones. See how these are all blue? I would do them all. I would go wild, blue, wild, purple. So knowing that if I only had something like, I don't know, a blue and I had a wild here, if I flipped over the wild first, I would get wild, and then the blue, I would get blue and then wild. If I did it the other way though, where I flipped over and did blue, and then I did wild, I would get blue, wild, and blue, which means I would get two blues and a wild. Two wilds and a blue is better, so how you flip over these cards is going to make a difference in the game. Also note, remember, that an important aspect of the game is you can only have one of each of the different scenes in the panorama. So you cannot have the first portion of blue more than once on yours, but another player could if they wanted to.
And there are a, a variety of these cards in the deck here, so that everybody could get any of the panoramas that they want. All the art is the same for each of the different panorama pieces, and there are, I believe, about four different types of panoramas, or five. There's a uh, red one, orange one, green one, and blue one. There's four. Um, and pretty much that's, that's the main aspects of the game. Remembering how you rotate this thing, how you can rotate it like this, um, or you can go the opposite way. But you always have to rotate from that piece, you have to rotate entire space 90 degrees uh, in either direction. And that will change how your board is going to look by the time it is now your turn. You'll now have a different variety of these um, components. And so because of that, on your card will be the same thing. You might not always get to rotate exactly the which, which one you want to rotate, or maybe you do, but you have to collect resources from one way or another. So how you choose to gather these on this little like resource gathering thing, you get four resources to start, is important. This game is all about resource collection, making sure you choose the right groundwork cards so that you know what's, but basically you have an option for, for gathering resources. If you don't have the right resources to place down on your cards, you can start slogging. So you have to be very careful, making sure that you choose the correct cards for the resources that you either already have, or place a card down and make sure that your tower generates you the resources that you want. Usually you actually want a lower amount of resources because otherwise you might get clogged up with having three bricks or having three uh, pieces of grass and then you might not get the other resources that you need in order to complete your different panoramas that you need. Knowing that whenever you place all three or four or five of the different panorama pieces uh, that there are of a color, you'll be able to score one of these little things here is important. But not only that, but which ones. I always suggest you start with this one here. It doesn't give you value, but what it does give you is additional resources that you can place down for additional panorama stuff. It's also important to note that this game is a low scoring game. The most points you're likely going to get is maybe 25 to 30 if you're really lucky. And so making sure that uh, you kind of push your opponents out is going to help you. Making sure you, maybe you select certain different types of tracks that you want to kind of focus on and what cards you select, not only on their panorama color, but what, what color of points you can get when you place those cards down is important as well. You may only ever have three of these groundwork cards face up, so you have to always make sure that when you choose to place certain ones, they're the ones that you want to utilize. Um, otherwise, it's going to be hard in order to place them out. You're not going to basically, you're going to be kind of clogging yourself up, unfortunately. Um, and also note that the wheelbarrow, instead of just placing them down from here onto your cards, you can also get rid of them if you don't need them or cannot use them. Four Gardens is a fun, puzzly tableau management type of game with a unique 3D model of the resource gathering options that you can have in the game. And it's a very simple, organized game. You only have really three actions. Gain resources and rotate, take the resources that you gain and place them on your face-up cards, and place face-up cards. There are some little things you can do from here and there. What card you choose matters. How you choose to take the cards from your opponents can make a difference. Hate drafting from your opponents and using those cards to play as actions is important, especially when players start getting really large panoramas because the more cards of the same color you can get, the more bonus, bonus, bonus points you can achieve. So getting the smaller panoramas might not be super good as far as points go, but it might help you get these little tokens here you can use throughout the game. The artwork, beautiful. I love, love, love the panoramas. They are really, really cool. A couple little things with how you would notice that some of the cards panoramas were not precisely cut. So you could tell that they kind of just goofed a little bit on the cutting on some of the cards. Not a huge deal. Not something I really, I didn't notice until the very end of the game that there was a couple of them that just kind of just weren't perfectly cut. It's, it's, it's not a game breaker or anything, but it's something I noticed. Um, and the gameplay is simple, straightforward. This is a family game. It is a little cutthroat with how the resources and the scoring works and the cards that you need. Um, and how you rotate this thing does affect other players. So there is kind of interaction, but it's kind of like subtle interaction throughout the game. But nothing that's going to be like specifically targeting another player or aggressive. This is all about completing your panoramas in your garden, trying to achieve the four gardens in the game, and attempting to secure the resources that you need in order to basically score as many points as you possibly can by the time the time is up, when all of your little cards have been placed face up. 
I enjoyed this game. It was a lot of fun. Um, I feel like the system of like taking resources and placing them and placing them onto here can be a little slower, take a little longer than I want. It might even overstay its welcome in a larger player game. But otherwise, I don't have any qualms about this game. It's a beautiful, fun family game that has a really unique mechanism for scoring and gaining resources. And overall, I just had a really good time. If you're interested, there's a link down below in the description where you can take a look at Four Gardens by Korea Games and of course, Arcane Wonders. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Four Gardens. If you're interested, like I said, you know where to go. You can also go ahead and, if you think we've earned it, if you watch more than one of our videos here on YouTube, like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button and bell notification button so you can see more of our videos, which now that I'm getting over being sick, as you can tell, I'm still not like 100%, but I'm now able to like do videos. Um, we do videos <laughs> four or five times a week and a live stream on Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST which I will now start doing once again. So sorry for those of you guys who are missing out on some videos. All right, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you. And as always, I look forward to constructing my four gardens with you next time.